So you want to do hydroponics, well then you're going to need to buy some nutrients. But what do you actually buy? Do you buy a granular nutrient or a liquid nutrient? And what is it that you're actually purchasing? Shouldn't there just be a one size fits all nutrient? We've got a lot of tips for you today. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. Today's episode is all about hydroponic nutrients, so let's get into it. So when you buy hydroponic nutrients, they're going to be in one of two states, granular or liquid. Which is the best for you? Before I get into the answer to that question, let's talk about what nutrients actually are. Now there's over 60 elements in the periodic table found in plants, but only about 16 of those are actually responsible for plant growth. Those 16 elements that are responsible for plant growth are what you're actually purchasing. Let's talk about those 16 elements a little bit more. So normally when you buy a hydroponic nutrient, it's typically sold to you in two different products, whether that's two liquids or two granulars. For example, I've got granular A and granular B. The same goes for liquid nutrients. Typically you're gonna need two or even three bottles sometimes. Why can't they just mix these things together? Those 16 elements that they're selling you are actually broken down into plant macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are things that plants need in large amounts in order to grow successfully, and micronutrients are things plants need in small amounts to grow successfully. The issue is if you combine these things together, they can react chemically in a way that makes them unavailable for plants. So in order for you to successfully deliver them to your plant system, they need to be sold separately and they need to be usually applied separately. Let's take a look at what these nutrients actually are. So here's a list of the various macronutrients and micronutrients that are found in the nutrients that you purchase. Starting with the macronutrients, you'll see carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These are things that plants get from the environment that they're grown in, such as air and water. So you're not actually putting these into your nutrient solutions. Then on the macronutrient list, you'll see nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, commonly referred to as NPK. These are the numbers listed on fertilizer bags and have traditionally been the main metric when purchasing fertilizers for plants in the past. A very loose guideline that I like to tell myself when it comes to NPK is shoots, roots, fruits. Nitrogen helps plants grow vegetatively, phosphorus helps with root development, and potassium is used in fruit development. Then moving down the list, we've got calcium, which is responsible for cell wall development in plants. Calcium deficient plants will not be able to produce fruit adequately and will often experience blossom end rot. Magnesium is found in the chlorophyll pigment, which makes plants green, and sulfur has to do with protein development. Moving to the micronutrients, you'll see that these things all have different effects in plants. And again, these are the things needed in small amounts. So plants can grow without these nutrients, but will often experience deficiencies. And I will do a video on plant deficiencies at a later date. But the various nutrients that you guys buy, whether they are granular or liquid, are a combination of all of the nutrients that you see on the screen. So you bought your nutrients and you're ready to start growing. So how do you know if your plants have enough nutrients? The measurement of nutrients in hydroponic systems is called electrical conductivity, which is something I talked about in a previous video. Electrical conductivity, or EC, can be measured with one of these things. This is called an EC meter. This EC meter gives a range of values, but typically most leafy green plants will succeed from EC levels of 0.8 to 1.6. Not very much. Whereas fruiting plants like tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, they're gonna need a higher amount of EC. 2.0 to 3.0. But either way, this meter gives you a good estimate of the amount of nutrients that are in your system. And it's really plug and play. There's no calibration needed. You just pop it in and read it and clean it when you're done. This thing is a good tool to have in hand if you're a hydroponic grower. So let's pretend we want to grow some lettuce using this solution right here. And lettuce requires an EC of about 1.0 and even less when it's younger. But we'll shoot for 1.0. So let's measure the EC of this solution. One point six. So that's a little nutrient rich for lettuce, but that's a pretty good solution, right? That means it'll grow. Not exactly. So all I did to that solution was I added sodium chloride to it, which if you don't know, will actually kill plants. So my point in showing you this is, yes, an EC meter will tell you the concentration of ions in a solution, but it doesn't tell you what those ions are. So if you use the wrong ions like this, or you use the wrong nutrient, It'll measure it, but your plants might not succeed. 
So be sure when you're measuring EC that you know that the nutrients that you put into your solution are what those plants need. So that brings us to the question of today's video, should you buy liquid or granular hydroponic nutrients? So here's the thing, there's two factors that I think are the most important when it comes to which type of nutrient you should buy. The first one is ease of use and the second one is cost. So let's break this down. As far as ease of use, if you're a home grower and you have a 50 gallon, 100 gallon system, that you're only growing a few vegetables in all year, liquid nutrients might be easier for you because they're gonna store nice and conveniently in a cabinet in your house. You're only gonna to need to fertilize your system once or twice a month and it'll last you multiple years. Granular nutrients honestly aren't that much more difficult. You actually make liquid solutions out of the granular nutrients anyway. The only problem is them actually dissolving in the water. It's really not that hard though. As far as ease of use, this one only has a slight edge. Now the main important thing in this equation is the cost. These five gallons of liquid nutrients and these 40 pounds of granular nutrients both cost $129.99, coincidentally. But here's the caveat. This $130 liquid nutrient will make 1,000 gallons of nutrient solution. So for $130, you get 1,000 gallons. This $130 of granular nutrients will make you 4,000 gallons of nutrient solution. So same cost, 1,000 gallons, 4,000 gallons. So if you're a commercial grower, there's no question that you're going to want to use granular nutrients because you get four times as much nutrient solution as you do with liquid nutrients. So that's it guys, I hope this video helps you answer some questions about starting in hydroponics. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.